Hi YouTube, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video I'm going to show you how you can go about making use of the live boolean feature to make some hard edged models. So what I'm doing here is just starting off with the mesh, making it polymesh 3D so that I can uh, start editing the geometry. Now as you can see it's quite faceted so I'm just dividing the mesh a few times by pressing Ctrl D. What I'm going to do now is just delete the lower subdivisions and look to change it into a DynaMesh so that we've got some geometry to actually work with. So as you can see, quite a bit of mesh there. So I've been asked recently, how do you go about starting using Live Boolean? We well, need to give an indication of your first tool, the one that it's gonna affect everything else with. And then you also need to turn on the Live Boolean button. Now, once you've done that, anything that's underneath it will affect the live boolean. But first off, I've appended a cube into the scene, um, and then these are the main two buttons. So you can take it away from the original object, or you can be left over with uh, what would be the uh, remains of that object. So I'm gonna take away, and what I'm also gonna do is append in another uh, cylinder. And you need to make sure that you're on the right tool uh, for it to have the right effect. So I'm just rotating it around by 90. And all I want to do with this is just demonstrate how quick uh, and easy the um, live Boolean feature is for making hard edge models. Uh, as I've been asked uh, recently quite a few times, how do you go about best making a hard edge model? As you can see, it's trimmed all that in, in a part out, but we're left with faceted edges. The easiest way I'm going to get rid of that is just to divide that mesh. And as you can see again, I've got a nice smooth result from that. Now, I'm not happy about this kind of hard element that's going around the inside. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate the sphere initially, move it down to the bottom of the stack, move it away from the object just so that it intersects a little bit. And if I trim that part off, you can see that I get a nice kind of uh, uh, chamfered edge that goes around the inside of that model. What I also want to start thinking about doing is maybe cutting a little bit more detail into the uh, outside of the mesh. So I'm going to use the ring uh, for that sort of method. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and the cool thing about the live boolean feature is that you can make your tools um, edit or uh, changeable um, in real time. So as you can see from this, I've divided it so that I've got a smooth result, but I'm not happy with the width or the position of that thing. So what I can do is use the moving tools to actually either move it into a better position, and as you can see, I'm scaling it down so that I end up with a, a ridge that goes around the whole thing. So I'm gonna duplicate that a couple more times, just so that I get a few uh, patterned ridges within the actual mesh and then what I'm going to do is look to yeah, I'll put it about there um, what I'm going to look to do then is uh, add in a little bit of surface detail um, maybe like some uh, indents or something like that so what I'll do is I'll use a cylinder and I'm going to shrink this down and then just line it up at the front of this particular model. I'm gonna to want to put it at about 45 degrees because it's gonna be at an angle. So if you're doing hard edge stuff in ZBrush 4 R7, I'd have been saying use the click curve tools to try and attempt to do this sort of stuff. But this live Boolean feature is, is really awesome, um, really works so well to, to be able to give you clean results. So I'd highly recommend this over that technique now. Um, I'm going into the array tool and I'm gonna go into its uh, light box uh, settings and I'm after the circular feature. So if I just double click on that and then get rid of this light box, as you can see, it's made uh, a pattern of those um, cylinders. So it's got 16 repetitions in this and you can increase how much uh, information it's got you can change its scale in whether it's x y and z you know 
has more uh, uh, increased size or whatever you can offset it you can rotate the thing round you can change its pivot and this is the one that I'm after so in the Y amount I'm just wanting to kind of get it so it goes round the edge of my object <clears throat> I could increase the amount of repetition in there, but I'm quite happy with it. So I'm just going to make it into a mesh, and that has now become a subtool. So because it's now a subtool, I can remove it from the original model. So let's say that this is the finalized model, and that I'm happy with that. To make it into its own version, all you need to do is go to where it says Boolean, make Boolean mesh, click on that, and it will kick out a model that doesn't have all these extra subtools in it it's just one complete piece of mesh so if i click on that put the wireframe on um, you can see that it's just one mesh topology is not too bad apart from at the back in that yellow section but the rest of it is pretty much spot on so that's how you can go about using live boolean i hope that's been useful if you've liked the content please like the video and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching